Hi, welcome to the Aruba Quick Start series of videos. In this video, I'm going to present some product details on our new 8360 Switch Series. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the 8360 Switch Series is a new series of switches released in November of 2020. Uh, you can see here it's going to be five models of switches. These switches help fill a gap in our portfolio with regards to lower port density options for both spine and uh, top of rack or access layer uh, connectivity for our customers. Uh, some of the key features are it's going to be running the CX operating system. It'll be coming with a 10.6 code. It's a non-blocking uh, solution and of course we are running the CX operating system so we still have and we support of course the network analytics engine. We support high availability with VSX so multi-chassis link aggregation. And then of course we support uh, the advanced layer two and layer three features you'd expect in these types of solutions. So VXLAN, OSPF, EVPN, BGP. Uh, because these are dedicated for or targeted for data center and aggregation type environments, of course, high availability is a key. So we have redundant fan trays, redundant power supplies. We have airflow options for both front to back and back to front airflow options. In fact, we're actually introducing an air duct kit with these series to help ensure that those uh, power to port or back to front options uh, have optimal airflow going across them. Taking a little closer look at the five models here, we can see the five separate models. So we have a 12 port 100 gig model, two 25 gig models, so 32 ports and 16 ports of 25 gig host connectivity with 400 gig or 200 gig uplinks. We have a 48 port 10 gig base T option that also has 400 gig uplinks. And then we have a smaller 24 port 10 gig uh, SFP plus option with 200 gig uplinks. Now we've bundled all of these together so that uh, customers simply choose the bundled SKU and all of the fan trays and power supplies for that airflow option will come bundled with that SKU. So if you want front to back or back to front, these are the SKUs that we would order. I also have on the chart here the base SKU for the chassis because those you might see those somewhere in, in some documentation, but when we order the devices, of course, we should use these bundled orders. Uh, taking a little bit closer look at the uh, field replaceable units on these switches. So the software is what configures the airflow, and the airflow, the system airflow actually monitors power supply one or power supply two if there is no power supply one. Uh, and then it's going to understand the airflow that power supply one offers, and then that's going to be what the switch is configured for. So if you were to install like fan trays that had different uh, airflow options, then of course we would get an error. Um, if we do want to change the airflow direction in these switches, of course, we do need to replace all the power supplies and fan trays, and so that does require a full shutdown of the switch. <clears throat> Taking a little closer look at the uh, power supplies, we can see the two power supplies, so JL600A and JL712A. Of course, they are color-coded with the red and blue tab, so the red tab means hot air is being pulled through the fan, uh, power supply or fan, and the blue tab means cool air is being drawn into the fan. Uh, max power of these are 500 watts, and of course they're in plus one operation, so they're uh, high availability, uh, redundant power supplies for the switch. Um, take note, if, if one of the power supplies fails, our recommendation is to keep that power supply in the switch until uh, a replacement is made available. This helps ensure that the airflow through the switch doesn't get uh, disrupted due to a uh, big gap that's now available, of course, in the switch. And very, very similar for the fan trays. So we have the two fan trays. JL714A is our uh, port to power or front to back airflow uh, fan tray. And JL715A is the back to front. Uh, again, you don't need to order these fan trays because they'll come bundled in those bundled SKUs with the, uh, with the, with the switch itself. Um, and then just take note, if one fan tray does fail, the other two fans will uh, increase their speed to 100% indefinitely so that they can keep the switch at uh, the proper cooling levels. And very similar to what I mentioned on the power supply, if one of the fans do fails, our recommendation is to leave that fan installed in the switch until a replacement is made available. That helps ensure that the airflow going through the switch isn't disrupted by a big gap now. 
Now, uh, what comes with the switch? So really the Bluetooth dongle comes with the switch, just like it comes with all of our CX switches to help our customers just simply use that Bluetooth dongle in their phone to get the switch online. Uh, however, rack kits are going to be ordered separately, and I mentioned the, four, the duct kit. The duct kit is actually a four-post duct kit, so it actually requires the four-post rack mounting kit also. Uh, console cables need to be ordered separately, of course, also. Now, when we're uh, racking the switch, we have uh, two-post racking options, as we can see here, the different, uh, the different uh, dimensions that can be used with regards to racking this switch with the two-post rack kit. Uh, and of course, we have the four post rack kit, which is going to be common, most common in data centers, of course, uh, especially with the power to port configurations, because that's going to require the, the duct kit. In fact, here's the duct kit. So this is a new product we're introducing with the 8360. Um, it also does work with the Aruba 6300 out of band management switch, which is a uh, back to front airflow switch also. So we can use it with bo both these 8360s and that 6300 back to front. And it really helps us ensure that these switches that are racked at the top of a rack where there's usually a lot of servers underneath them with all this hot air being uh, rising up through the rack, with this air duct kit, we're able to ensure that we're getting uh, more efficient airflow coming into the switch because it's not being uh, sucking all the hot air in from the servers. Uh, here we have another uh, example of this these rack kits, so this air duct kit being mounted into uh, the four post rack kit and then being uh, added into the uh, rack, into the four post rack and being mounted. Now, transceivers and cables. So the 8360 switch series, they don't support 10 gig LRM, and they don't support 7 meter 10 gig DAX. Uh, when we're talking about splitting ports, uh, a reboot is required to transition between a split and an unsplit type port. Um, we're going to have code coming. Uh, the next code release, actually, 10.7, will allow us to uh, split without actually doing a reboot. Um, the Aruba 48 port 10 gig base T option, that's the one switch that doesn't support splitting ports. And of course for splitting ports we have the HIT split cables which are fully supported. Another thing to be aware of is port groups. So on the 8360 we really don't have any port groups on the 8360. Well, it, that's not true. We have one port group. And that one port group is these four MACSEC ports which are only on the 32 port 25 gig option. So the first four ports on that switch are capable of 10, 25 gig MACSEC. And those are the only four ports that all have to operate at the same speed. Uh, and then of course, uh, just like with the other CX switches, unsupported transceiver mode is supported for one gig and 10 gig type transceivers and DACs. Um, 25, 40, and 100 gig uh, still aren't supported, but of course this full list can be, list be found on the Aruba uh, documentation. Um, when we're another caveat to mention is the 10 gig base T option. Uh, so this switch, uh, when when the ports are operated at 100 meg, they don't support half duplex, so it's going to automatically parallel detect to 100 meg full duplex. Um, and we don't support setting a forced mode on these these uh, front facing ports. Uh, and when we're operating at 100 meg and one gig, the uh, flow control counters are actually not accurate with this first release. Uh, our second release coming uh, later this uh, next year will have a fix for that. Um, and then the base T optics. So the base T optics can be used on all of the SFP plus or SFP 28 ports on the other 8325s. Uh, we have the 10 gig base T optic and then of course we have the 1 gig uh, base T optic. Um, Take note that the, the first four ports on that 32 port switch are the MACSEC ports, so they don't operate at 1 gig, they only operate at 10 or 25 gigs. So on those four ports, you could only use the 10 gig base T1.
Now another thing to note is the 8360 Switch Series also supports splitting the 140 gig type interfaces. However, the 48 port, the one that has 400 gig interfaces, those do not support splitting. So that's the big takeaway on this chart is that's the one port, the one switch that those 100 gig ports have to operate at 100 gig. Uh, but on all the other switches, we can operate using the transceivers that you see here. And of course, those transceivers could be connected at you know, 40 gig going in one end. And then on the other end, we could have uh, LC cables breaking those out into 10 gig or 25 gig on the 100 gig type connectivity options. I'll leave you with a list of SKUs supported uh, of the 8360 switch series. So we have the base chassis SKUs, which really aren't orderable. The orderable SKUs are all these bundles up above. So we've, we've got a number of uh, 8360s that our customers can order that will come in either port to power or power to port airflow options. And I'll leave that presentation with you. I hope you enjoy the 8360 Switch Series. Thank you.